Hello and welcome back. This is the second part of the World of Warcraft, The Burning Crusade, official strategic guide from Brady Games, as you can see. We're gonna continue from where we left off by the different classes and go through the rest of the book. I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Thank you. We're gonna continue from where we left off and we left off by the new races and first up are the blood elf two surprising allies as the ceasefire between the horde and alliance continues to erode both sides have begun enlisting aid for the coming war, though goals may differ. No one wants to be the single empire against a united front. The Horde and Alliance alike are eager to find new forces that will grant them an edge. They need to be victorious. The Blood Elves, Blood Elves, a tale tarnished with blood. Countless centuries ago, ships landed on the shore of Lordaeron. The exiled High Elves, led by Doth Remar Sunstrider, tried to take a new home for themselves. Made mortal by the loss of contact with the Well of Eternity, many of the High Elves fell to starvation or illness with their trek across Tearsfall Glades. Insanity claimed many more before the cause was found. An evil influence within Tyrus Falklades itself was eroding what was little left of the High Elves. Leaving Tyrus Falklades, the High Elves met the Trolls of Suleiman. The meeting went poorly and the Trolls vowed to exterminate the High Elves from the lands of the Troll, so as theirs. The war continued while the refugee elves looked for a land to call home. They came up to a forest to si so similar to their lost home in Kalimthor that there was no question that they would settle there. There's a lot of lore here. Let's see it through the pages. The kingdom of Quelatalas was founded when the last of the Amani trolls were pushed out of the region. Using their greatest arcane arts and a vial of water stolen from the Well of Eternity, the High Elves crafted a sun well. This bastion of magic energy infused all the High Elves with strength and vi vigor. So powerful was the sun well that spring would forever reign in Eversong forest. Fences would bring the High Elves for a thousand years of peace. So it talks about the war with the trolls. It was during a terrible war with the Amani trolls that force of Quel Thalas sought aid from the human nation Arathor. Though the trolls vastly outnumbered the elves, the combined forces of Quel Thalas and Arathor, whom the elf taught magic, mm -hmm. ground the Imani Empire into dust. And here they talk about the lore of the Second War, how they got uh, the help of the Horde. And about the Third War, during the Third War, the Undead Army so ran the Elven Nation and closed on the precious Sunwell. Betrayal created the opening and the Sunwell was shattering. The royal family was killed, save for Prince Keltha Samstrayr, who was studying in Dalaran at the time. So all of this is lore about the Blood Elves. And 
down here, living a new life. Through their power diminished by the absence of the Sunwell, the Blood Elves has found ways to continue living. The constant hunger for magic has become a way to weed out the ranks of the Elves. The weak become the wretched, while the strongest get to rebuild that nation. And here are all the classes the Blood Elves can be. They can be rogue. The Blood Elves have learned the art and power of subtlety and shadows. They can be mage, warlock and hunter. They can be paladin and priest as well. I'm sure they could be a warrior as well, but maybe they won't go into that here. Yeah. No classes. Mage, Paladin, Hunter, Priest, and Warlock. From TBC Classic. And it's about their arcane affinity, their special racial skills. And there's about the Grand Eyes. These are my favorites to play and my favorite character lore wise. The Shays. Thousands of years ago, on a world called Argus, the Eredar lived masters of their world. They used intelligence and magical affinity to craft a society brighter than the stars themselves. Very little seemed beyond the reach of these people, and Argus shone like a beacon across the cosmos. No beacon goes unseen. Sargeras, the destroyer of worlds, saw the accomplishments of the Eridar, and they would fit nicely into his plans. Bent on destroying all life, Sargeras saw the Eridar, saw in the Eridar the power to lead his army of demons. Contact was made between Sajeras and three of the Eridar leaders. He offered all what all demons offer, power and knowledge, in exchange for loyalty. Sajeras didn't want their loyalty though. He wanted the entire Eridar race. Kiljaden and Archimonde were tempted by the offer, while Velan was hesitant. They were given time to think it over. Velan had cultivated the gift of foresight. He called upon the gift and was bestowed with a vision of the future. He saw the truth of Sergera's words. The Eredar who accepted this offer, his offer, would gain almost limitless power and knowledge. The price, Velan saw, would be terrible. The Eredar would, trans would be transformed into creatures of evil. This vision continued, and Velan saw the burning legion, and the purpose for which it was created. He watched as the legion destroyed civilization after civilization. He awoke from the vision, terribly disturbed, though he warned the others of this vision. Kiljaden and Archimon ignored Velan. The power that Sajeras offered was too great a temptation. And here is the Naros, the creatures of light, the Draenei. They are seen as gods in the game. Once again, Velan attempted to call upon his foresight. His despair disturbed his concentration, but it was enough to call a strange creature before him. It explained that his prayer had been heard. Velan listened closely as the creature called itself a Naru. The Naru was a race of energy beings that had pledged themselves to stopping the burning crusade. And they had to flee from their home, home planet. And here it talks about the lore, how they were chased by Kiljajan. 
Kill Jade and Orkimon and Zajeras. The Nari began to teach the Draenei a blessing them with powers and knowledge of the light. And here is when they crashed with their spaceship on a Sermist island. Knowing yourself, the Draenei have spent many lifetimes perfecting themselves. Their once brilliant civilization was a place of learning, and what the Draenei didn't discover themselves, they learned from others. Perhaps it was this ability to absorb knowledge that Sargeras saw in them. And the classes they can be warrior, mage, shaman, hunter, and up here we can see paladin and priest. And classic I play a warrior, a male granite warrior. But this were the first time that a lion could have a shaman character and here's their racial ability the gift of the Naru it's a heal and here's some about training the newcomers this chapter take players both new and old through the creation of advancement of the new races. Rather than doing what we did with the master guides and give them and give you a modest walkthrough of the starting zones, we gone much farther. This time the walkthroughs covered the full path from creation to around level twenty. Quell the last and ghost lands are covered first, then we'll start over and give you a tour of a Sermist and blood mist isles with the grand eyes so all of this blood isles then they start in Everson Woods map legend so this is the capital of silver moon and I guess all of this are maybe the quest hubs there's just a long list all the little dots, what they mean. And we're not gonna go through everything in this book because I think you will get bored after too many parts and just names. Here is some info about Everson Woods. Everson Woods. Let's read at the top. Everson Woods is the home of the Blood Elven capital, Silver Moon City. Though still in the process of reclaiming this land, the Blood Elves possess relatively safe here. Safety here. Due to their recent efforts, flight from Silver Moon have resumed, and the new union with the Horde makes it possible for the Blood Elves to spread out across Azeroth without the odds of being stacked as heavily against them. That said, the Dead Scar is one of the greatest reminders that the doom and peril of the Scrooge stands ready to push into Quel'Thalas during death, even the faintest moments of weakness. I think it's quite hard to read this small text. It's about Strum Sunstrider Isle. And here's about all the quests you can do, and where to go while doing the quests. This old has a lot of tutorials and and uh, tips and everything like that. I got a comment on my last video about how these books used to be the original. Was it either Wowhead or Totbot? And that's true. I remember when I started playing, I couldn't find a lot of tutorials how to complete stuff, so I used to have to figure it out on my own. I really hope the microphone won't pick up. My uh, neighbors have been screaming now for two hours just fighting, and my dog is next beside me. So if you hear 
and they wait noises. You know what it is. Here's the quest where you go through the soul, the dead scar and so on. It is when you conti continue on to Fairbury's village. Some tips when dealing with competition. This is nice when you're just gonna glue everything. It's wise to start with the Lost Ornaments quest because there may not be enough boxes in the area to collect eight Cinderay ornaments in a single run. When other people are in the area, you need to wait a few minutes for a respawn of these boxes. So make your run to divert further west if competition causes you to cool your heel, heels a little. Run to Grimskin Pirate's quest in the meanwhile, and there should be plenty of new boxes by the time you get back. He's waiting for respawns, where they're a good thing. Rolling over to his side. This is just about all the quests and how to maybe complete them. Here's a Silver Moon City Map Legend. I was thinking about making a Silver Moon City exploration video, but I'm still figuring out if I should do it in retail or in the classic servers. What would be more exciting? Here's the Silver Moon City legend, all the different thoughts, and where to go points of interest. And there is the Ghostlands map legend. Here we can see Suleiman and all of the point of interests. Walkthrough for Ghostlands. Greatly affected by the ravages of the plague, Ghostlands are currently dark and dangerous. Lurking within the shadows of the mist and trees are many animals that have been changed by the influence of the Scrooge. Here too, the dead scar runs horribly through the wilderness, a highway for the legions of unthinking monsters that serve the Lich King's will. Here is about the ghost lands. So it gets itself up through level 20 in these zones. How to finish off the quests within the ghost lands. Here we can see the Sulaman trolls. Getting close to the end. Start wrapping up on the other loose ends and side quests on the ghost lands. Some tips where we're going next and what to do at the end. And here is Silvana's. Silvana's Ring Runner. I miss this old character and their old model. That was so good. The lore used to be really good before a certain point. Here's some when you have enough levels or people. I guess these were some larger bosses, maybe our group quests. Seeing the world. Your actions have helped to save the ghost lands, at least for now. However, with the plague land so close, it would be near insanity to leave it at that. Listen to Magister. Kendris and take a flight to the capital so you can meet Lord Themhar Theron, the leader of Quel'Thalas. This time you arrive at the Silver Moon City as hero of the Sindurai. And these are time for the Dran Eyes. And I maybe forgot to sell, but this chapter is your first day. 
to do as a newly sorted draenei or blood elf so let's see draenei the hexodar crashed on a small cluster of islands the primary two are a Shermist Isle and Bloodmist Isle, while parts of the Exodar were scattered across the island. Largest portion has become the hub of the Draenei civilization on the Shermist Isle. The quest throughout these two zones teach you quite a bit about the Draenei and you and yourself. Be prepared prepared to adventure in these islands until level 20 if you want to use them to their fullest. The starter stone of Azurmist Isle was what gave me this deep love for the Draenei's. I think this is maybe my favorite starter zone of all time. Here's the Azurmist Isle map legend, you can see the Exodar. And here's Ammon Whale, where you start out. Are all the points of his their interests. Walk through for Azure Mistyle. The quiet tranquility of Azure Mistyle was shattered when the burning and fragmenting hulk of the Exodar plummeted to Azeroth. Much of the wildlife was killed when the flaming pieces of metal and crystal hit the ground. Even more were mutated and corrupted when the systems that were wide out the Exodar's functioning provide toxic to the plants and wildlife of Azeroth. Here's the first Ammon Vale. Your boat crashed in the small valley of Ammon Vale. While you are not alone, there are only a few other Draenei who have landed here. With much of the technology from the Exodar in ruins, you will have to rely on your own abilities to survive and help others. Here are the first quests that you have to do. Here when you meet early on some blood elves, there are spying. Mm. And the sewer watch, there's a lot of quests there, all the way through the Exodus. There's a lot of quests and I actually, since I started playing the last month of classic The Burning Crusade, I got to experience this again and it feels like I remember every quest. Still buying hold, all the Murloc quests. Here is the Exodar map legend. We have the Seed of the Naru Traders here, the Vault of the Lights, and the Crystal Hall. I made a exploring video. My first gaming... No, it's not my first gaming video. But uh, I had my pet collection, a mount collection, but it was my first exploring video I did on the channel. Here we have a comic. Hello, indigenous creature. Hey. We have crash landed on your world and almost all of your hollow cronations are broken. I don't know if we have any of that. But do you guys fix your spaceships? Surely they must need repairs from time to time. They call it milk. What is it? I don't know. Apparently they squeeze it from one of their animals. Is the extra Is the Blood Mist Isle map legend and all of the points? Walk through for Blood Mist Isle. While the bulk of the Exodar landed on a Sure Mist Isle, many more of the toxic systems landed on what is now Blood Mist Isle. The Draenei have had the unfortunate experience of watching the land become corrupted before their very eyes. of the quests. The Blood Watch. There were a lot of quests. I 
I also loved, I started leveling up my mining in this zone Got it pretty high This completely red zone We're skipping through a lot of it Just because it's very much in detail And we're gonna go through the rest of this book today Finding the sun portal Razor Maw and the Vector Coil Here is the next part Outland And then we go through Hellfire, Sangar Marsh, Tarokar Forest, Shattered City, Nagrand, Blade's Edge and Netherstorm We have a few there to go Or to tread the maps and legends within provide a wealth of information of the many new zones for the expansion. In earlier chapters, we re revealed the zones for the incoming Blood Elves and Draenei. Here, we'll show you a list of the people and places this in this rediscovered world. And there's Hellfire Peninsula, where you first enter when you walk through the dark portal. And it continues. Here's Sangar Marsh. That used to be a, a big sea, I think, lore wise. Terracor Forest. Here's the Ogondin and Shattered City. This is my favorite zone in game. The music is beautiful, the ambience is amazing I can't tell you enough how much I love this song It's the color scheme it Brings me a lot of peace and a lot of joy Here's Shattered City All lures rise, scryers tear, terrace of light and the lower city We can see some of them. This is the squire's tear on the inn or a bar, and outside you can see from the lower city. Nagrand or Nagrand. I don't know what you might call it. Or how to say it enough But this is also a very loved zone The music here is wonderful And even though it's a destroyed world It's a very very beautiful zone That a lot of people have as their favorite You can see in the pictures It's giving me a lot of classic nostalgia Blade Edge Mountains Where some of the black dragons went Zabillion, right? Is now in Dragonflight And you can either pledge your alliance to Zabillion, Zabillion? I can't remember his name now uh, Or Rathion And I always chose the first one Because he was already with us here in Bladed Mountains Back in the Burning Crusade Another storm. I saw now they did not have um, Shadow Moon in this tutorial. Maybe this was released before or something, but the Shadow Moon Valley isn't here. Another storm. Some beautiful place as well with a lot of good quests. Here are some world dungeons. That's the next chapter. World dungeons. We have blood furnace, hellfire ramparts, sleigh pens, underbuck. 
that is very strange how Shadow Moon Valley wasn't included since there is where the Black Temple is. It's just information how to get to the dungeons, what to do in the dungeons, who to bring to the dungeons, what classes is good. I've never been a person that has done a lot of PvE. Neither is it dungeons, I've never done heroics, mm, not heroics, but mythics and mythic plots. I've been reading a bit when I was younger, but trust me, I'm... I used to be really bad, and now I just don't have the time. It continues through the plot furnace. There's a lot of information. Imagine having to buy this book. This booklet for like twenty dollars. Just to be able to run through a dungeon. That's crazy. Hellfire Ramparts, how to get to the Hellfire Ramparts, how to kill all of the mobs, getting to the slave pens, this is in Sangar Marsh, some underwater, where you fight the Nagas. I'm going to have to edit out my... Here's the underboat. My dog is doing this faint little whining because he has to sit on the chair next to me and I guess he's upset. It's so much information. Crafting skill and items. And these are all the recipes. Jesus. But this was so good back in the day to have if you were wondering something. You're gonna see here it says crafting. We have alchemy, blacksmithing, cooking, enchanting, engineering, first aid, UL crafting, leather working, poisons, and tailoring. And we have a little comic. Among many other things, Burning Crusade was also in Crusade also introduces a new trading skill, jewel crafting. Well, this one here has stamina bonus and plus uh, and a plus to resist fire. Oh she she would love that. She spends a lot of time in the molten core. You kids are getting pretty serious, huh? Oh yeah, I think she's the one. Really? Well, on this server. And here are just a list of all the items. Minor healing potion, elixir of lion strength, and so on. Imagine having to search this up just to know where to get it from. What the name is, the skill level, source, found, trained, all of that, and regions. You see, you would know what you would need. Found, 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 trained, 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 found. And it just goes on and on and on. It's quite crazy how it used to be like this back in the, back in the day. This is how you would find all your knowledge. And I am just skipping through. This last part of the book just has a lot of these a long list of names of quests and crafting and items and that might not be as enjoying to go through enough but 
still it's a uh, this is very nostalgic for me and I hope it's very nostalgic for you here are all the quests and it just lists uh, the quest in Ammonvale, Ashenvale Hawkundin, Surmy Style Badlands, Blades Age There's a lot of Blood Mistyle down here Continues with Blood Mistyle Here's Caverns of Time Coilfang Reservoir Eversong Woods I'm reading it on the sides here As you can see how many quests there are Exodar, Ghostlands Hellfire Citadel, Hellfire Peninsula This is crazy oh, There are three, four, almost five pages of used Hellfire Peninsula Hills, Brad, Foothills, Hinterlands, Ironforge, Karasan Malgor, Nagran Nether Storm Ogrimmar, Shadow Moon Valley I really enjoy how they potted it up in different different um, colors as you can see when it's another zone but here's Shadow Moon Valley why weren't there any information in the zones were that missed? I wonder it just continues with all of the quests of Shadow Moon Valley Shadrat City Stormwind Stranglethorn Vale Swamps of Sorrow, no, Sunstrider Riley, Swamps of Sorrow, Campus Deep, Terrocar Forest, Thousand Needles, Undercity, Western Plaguelands, Sanger Marsh, and here it ended. Equipment, oh my god, it never stops. We're soon throughout it. And there are the different equipments. Cloth, armor, it starts with we have armor, weapons, armor, weapons, armor, weapons, armor, weapons. And there is the first cloth, 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 cloth. Epic cloth chest. And it's all epic. And here's Superior cloth chests. All of these are epics. In the purple color, more superior epic cloth feet. It's just all that. And there's shoes for the feet, epic cloth hands. See how much information there is. How to get all of these? Epic cloth hand. This could be a lot of information to take in for someone who's starting out. We're still on cloth. It's just pages and pages. Where's the cloth waist? Wrist. Here's a leather, 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 leather. The epic and blue gear, purple and blue gear. You're still on armor. Then we have to go through the weapons. Epic leather head. And here's the epic leather legs. So we're through with the leather, I hope.
Still not even on weapons yet. That's gonna be the last part. Here we have epic cloaks. Did I miss something? Shields and cloaks. Oh, it still counts as armor, so we're not on weapons. Here, armor and weapons. Here are some of the weapons. Axes. Axes. barely uses pole armors anymore. Staves, 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 staves. Swords, swords, swords. There's a legendary one head sword. Thunder Fury, a blessed blade of the Wind Seeker. I have this on my rogue character. And I have the um the big warclaves from the Black Temple. Parts, I think. Peace, Jerry. The sun is coming out, thankfully, but it's shining in my eyes. With new levels to gain and new areas to explore, you can expect there to be a new foes to conquer as well. There are not only a huge number of new opponents. There are entire races in Outland that have never before been seen in the World of Warcraft universe. Everything looks better than ever. Here is the Arakoa. Primary locations Hellfire Peninsula, Terrakar Forest, Shattered City, and Blade Edge Mountains. Tameable no. The bird like skerries are found in several areas of Outland may seem at first like all of them are hostile and cruel. Many of them are. However, there are a pocket groups of these creatures that have renounced combat for the time and are seeking shelter in Shattered City. Be wary of those you found out in the field, as they are most certainly not of that variety. Erakoa li like to live both on the ground and hover higher up in the trees. They are able to create settlements with a fair degree of skill, and they are not shy about patrolling to keep these areas clear of vermin. In Terracon Forest, home to many different groups of vermin, Arakoa, sorry, friendly Arakoa blessed by the Naru are interested in fending off the hostile intentions of their former brethren. Broken, he broke. Primary 
location Sangar Marsh, Coil Fang Reservoir in Sangar Marsh, Negram and Shannon Valley, Tamable, no. And here you can see the broken, how beautiful it is, the original granite. The orcs of Outland were not the only ones to suffer the burning legions, demonic corruption, the broken, led by the great Akama fell prey to the demons, sinister influence, and were changed by the corruption. Though the broken lost some of their former powers, they still pres present a clear danger to all of Illidan's enemies throughout Outland. It almost seemed like a miracle that the broken somehow managed to preserve their shamanic heritage, yet no one can say for sure how many of their traditions are still intact. From the safety of the fortified villages of the broken hold in Outland, they lord over their lesser cousin, the wretched lost ones. You can tell the difference between the broken and the lost by looking at the size. The lost are small, spindly creatures, far removed from the strong and driven Draenei. Though the broken look somewhat feral, they still are. They are still thick-bodied and healthy, showing at least some of their ancestry. Here are some of the demons. Many demons of the Burdening Legion are present in Outland. These evil foes attack settlements directly, but they also construct horror horrible fell cannons, fell rivers, and other cruel devices. To disrupt their efforts, creatures are both from both factions must do their best to attack the Burdening Legion wherever it is found. There are several new demons, types of demons in this mix. Bursters. Oh look, this is like the big worm. These worm-like creatures are seen in areas of outland that have loose soil that allow these burrowing creatures to hide themselves from danger. Then, when prey is close by and ready to pounce upon, they take their opponent opportunity to strike. You know when one of them is nearby because of the breaking trail of earth that moves about. Here's dragon hawks, the most beautiful animals in game. Dragon hawks are very rare indeed, and they are most often seen in Everson Woods, home of the blood elves, beautiful creatures. Dragon hawks are sought after by hunters from around the world. Even though their stats are rarely outshine those of more savage beasts. Alex. Alex. Alex are hunted for their great tusks and for the thrill of engaging such a powerful creature. Seen heavily, heavily in Nagrand, Alex are used as mounts by the Draenei and the Kurenai. If you thought that most cavalry was a to face, imagine a lance of these bearing down on your position. And here's the Eredar. The Eredar are one of the oldest known races in the universe. They comprise the commanders and strategies of the Burning Legion. Exceptional skill in magic, their mastery of the Arcane Arch is renowned throughout the scattered worlds of the great dark beyond. The likes of Archimon and Kil'jaeden feared and though for their unmatched cruelty and cunning are among the infamous members of Eredar race, the vanguard of an unstoppable demonic army bent on universal annihilation. And here's the Thorals. These are my favorite ones in game, and I wish to see her come back. They are just pure energy beings from a destroyed world. Treading the chaotic spaces between worlds, the Aetherals are astral travelers who dwell within the Twisting Narrow. They are known to be collectors and traders of arcane items and artifacts. Now drawn in out to Outland, many Aetherals are seeking to track down treasures and steal them back into the Twisting Nether. They are liars and scoundrels who stop at nothing to pursue their mysterious aims. 
the Ethereals have no care at all for the Burning Crusade. They would even play both sides of the conflict against each other if doing so would serve their own goals. Felorks. Mystery and speculation surrounding the Felorks who recently appeared in Outland. Though little is known about these savage warriors. Most disturbing revelation to come to light is that their numbers appear to steadily increasing. Even more perplexing is the fact that the orcs have discovered some alternative sources of fed energies to feed upon. Despite the slaying of Manoroth and the horde's subsequent release from the demonic corruption. We have the flesh beasts. It is said that the sleep of reason produced monsters. The fantasy abandoned by sanity brings forth creatures of nightmare. For most, the horrors of their sleeping hours can, cannot follow them into the waking world. Yet some are haunted by them even long after the veil of sleep have parted. The mindless flesh beasts were brought into this world by Medivh. Summoned from some unspeakable place beyond. Floating eye. Floating eyes are only seen in specific locations, and that is probably a good thing. Many adventurers are stuck with fear at the sight of such an odd and malevolent beings. Forest trolls. Long before the rise and fall of humanity's kingdoms, the Amani trolls of Lordaeron had built an enormous troll empire. After centuries of war and hate, an alliance of elves and humans finally dealt a crushing blow to the Amani when they defended a great troll army at the foot of the Alterag mountains. The empire did not recover from the defeat, and the trolls never rose as one nation again. Yet some forest trolls survived, each generation nurturing their hatred of elves in the dark forest of the north of thousands of years. Fungal Giants The unique gases and nutrient-enriched soil of Sangarmach have given rise to a wondrous, diverse wetland e ecology. The March Fungal giant stands as a prime example of the habitat's remarkable fauna. These lumbering behemoths are savagely efficient at dispatching their adversaries when provoked, through, though their low percep perception and only moderate speed prevent them from going after many travelers with any frequency. Giant moths Giant moths are usually peaceful unless there is a major irritant in the area to provoke them. Though large in size, most of these moths are kept safe more by their ability to emit some type of chemical that pacifies aggressors. Even under a direct attack, enemies of the moth are unable to strike for a modest time while these chemicals are emitted. And there's a groan. I like how it says, if it's tameable, there isn't a net big enough. Monst monstrous terror incarnate. Words cannot begin to describe the terrible groan of, in of Outland, the immortal demigods of the ogre race. Some say the groan have rise to the lesser ogres, yet if so, the groan show little love for their offspring loading over the ogre clans with an iron fist. There are said to be only seven grown in all of existence. Nonetheless, such rumors are cold comfort in light of the undeniable fact that the grown wield their devastating power. Lynxes Lynxes are new species of cats that have not been seen in quite some time. They exist both in Azeroth and Outland, 
would have been at the periphery mana worm with mana worms there can be no doubt at all that they are drawn to mana rich areas found in blood elven territory and in sections of outland they are heavy in mana these flying beasts are eager to drink from whatever source of power they find in the narrow when Sir Jeras descended on the Eretar's homeworld, a race of sentient being, energy beings, the Naru, helped some Eretar escape the corruption. Soon the Eretar refugees began calling themselves the Draenei, or exiled ones. Moved by the Draenei's courage, the Naru blessed them with the light given knowledge and power. Ultimately, the benevolent Naru hoped to unite all who opposed the Burning Legion and force these heroes into a single, unstoppable army of the light. Nether Drakes It is said that the Nether Drakes can be broken of their aggressive tendencies and trained to become flying mounts. Though likely true, those who meet the Drakes soon will soon understand that the only that only the bravest or luckiest explorers earn this right. Nether Drakes are naturally aggressive and ca quite capable of defending themselves. Nether Rays Nether Rays are a flying species of predator that are often hunted by settlements that wish to keep the region safe. Left to their own devices, these attackers are quick to aggro or on anything that passes through their territory. Moving, moving slowly through the air, it is possible to mistake a nether ray for a spore bat if you aren't looking closely at the shape of the creature. And that mistake might mean getting knocked off your mount or passing too close to such a fall. Ogre Lords The Ogre Lords of Outland are the only ogres known to retain some of the physical traits of their grown progenitors, such as the bony calci calcified prosturicians, I can't read that word, on their head and back, as well as a portion of the grown's immense size and strength. Other unique characteristics possessed by the ogre lords are their intelligence and reasoning abilities, which are more than acute than those of their ogre cousins. This combination of brute strength and increased intellect make the ogre lords worthy of both respect and fear. Ravages These predatory beasts are found all across Outland, often lurking about behind rocky clusters and towering escarpments, waiting to pounce on a prey foolhardily and not wander within striking range of their blindling fast razor sharp claws. Rock flyers. Rock flyers are one of Outland's indigenous species. Many careless wanderers have been killed by the primitive humanoids who roam the slopes and peaks of blade edge mountains in murderous packs. Though they primarily hunt small mountain animals, they are not afraid of stalking potential prey that is much bigger than they are. Sporlings Tameable, no, but they like you. Sporlings are the nicer residents of Sanger Marsh. These indigenous people are a fungal race that try to carve out a niche for themselves between the vicious Naga and the fungal giants of the region. Living off of glow caps are hard work. They stay moderately safe. Spore bats. The deadly spore bats are a subspecies of the spore walkers. Like their walker, walker cousin, the spore bats draw ingredients from the environments and combine them to form vir virulent toxins used in subduing the spore bats prey. Unlike the walkers, however, the spore bats have added advantage of light in their arsenal. 
spore walkers. It is believed that the spore walkers evolved over time from the simple organism that dwell within the depths of Sangar Marsh into the more efficient hunting, killing and eating machines that they are today. Utilizing their environment, the spore workers are able to derive toxins from the spore of the fungi of the marsh, which they in turn use to stun or immobilize their prey. Talbulks You might not expect the talbulks to be aggressive creatures, as they greatly resemble the types of prey animals that many see out in the barrens and in such areas. However, there are indeed some stronger and more aggressive varieties of this beast in outlands. Some are passive, but the males of the species are often very unwilling to fight a moment's notice. Warp Stalkers Warp Stalkers are crafty predatory hunters, intentioned to drain ore that have been corrupted by the Burning Legion. Some reports even suggest that the Burning Legion officers employ the stalkers as mounts, utilizing the creature's uncanny abilities to phase in and out of the physical and astral dimensions at will. Old, en old enemies with new threats There are many new skins for the models that you have already seen in World of Warcraft. The new starting areas, dungeons and outdoor zones of Outlands are filled with creatures that look slightly different in color or style than they did before. And that were the last. It just went over what it adds for new possibilities. And here's the exclusives. It just talks about how you can buy an exclusive world map or the master's guides with new dungeons, beast jerry, pvp combat and the expanded weapons and armor quest and classes and updated first aid professions and maps these books are a lot to go through and oh look here's the atlas i did a video on it's so nice and here's the dungeon companion then here's oh this is from 2007 this video has been very long and I can feel my throat now. I hope you have been enjoying it and I will see you next time.